as I often like to say to my two or three viewers and to the two or three of you, I want to specifically say thank you so very much for looking at my silly little videos on our YouTube channel, Motor Illustrated. Check out the reviews on the website too. We do a lot of news and stuff like that as well. Um, but yeah, getting back to what I like to tell my few viewers is when I'm doing a new car review, I say, go outside, check around your neighborhood or grocery store parking lot or whatnot and look what's around you and try and not be like everyone else. But for this review, I'm gonna say, do that. Go outside, check, it's actually kind of nice here. I can't believe it's early March. It's not good, my friend, not good. Um, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is you look around and you'll see in that parking lot, in your immediate neighborhood, if you can manage to see the forest through the trees, you'll see small compact SUVs everywhere. I mean, everywhere, just absolutely everywhere. And look, it is the biggest segment in Canada, North America too, I'm pretty sure. I should have checked the US numbers, but uh, you know, wherever they go, we go in that respect. And uh, I get the question. In fact, it is one of the most common questions that I get. What small SUV should I purchase? And my answer is always almost the same. This. This is a 2024 Toyota RAV4 Trail. Now, I always say this because um, I still have medium long-term trust issues with the Korean products. Uh, the Americans, despite their efforts, um, I, I don't know, there, there might be some value built into that, but it always really comes back down to the Japanese vehicles in the segment that I prefer and, well, trust more for longer relationships. I'm gonna be straight up honest, I'm not a big fan of the Nissan Rogue. I may have been in the past, but the current generation and the one before that, despite how popular it is, it, it's, it's, it's just, too vanilla and um, but for, as far as the others are concerned with the exclusion of the CRV of course which I've uh, put down on a number of occasions most recently the hybrid version uh, but it, it, it comes down to the Forester the CX-5 slash CX-50 and the Toyota RAV4 I think I got them all yeah Mazda yeah no Mitsubishi too forget about it at least in my opinion but I don't know anything literally I don't um, but come back full circle, this is the vehicle that I recommend most often. For the simple fact that, historically speaking, and value-wise, Toyota is pretty much hitting it out of the ballpark, especially when it comes to their hybrid and plug-in hybrid vehicles. But this isn't one of them. This is just a good old gasoline-powered 2024 RAV4 Trail. And that's the main reason why I was curious to drive it because not much has changed over the past few years other than, you know, tweaks and this and that. But it was the Trail Edition because as we know, and as I've said, and as you've read, I'm sure that anything adventure, off-road, whatever, or with a, you know, tall roof rack is very hot at this, at this point. And I usually like to pride myself by saying, I don't follow trends and blah, 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 and because I have wagons and stuff like that. But this, you know, more cladding. I'm a sucker for the roof rails. I, I just wanted to spend a week with it, and I have. And for the most part, I can tell you that the value thing that I just mentioned is absolutely true, even with this near top trim RAV4. Uh, and there's only one small issue that I can find with it, and it might just be because of the way I drive. If by chance you are just this curious about what that might be, please, please hang in there as I will do a few laps of this 24 RAV4 trail in army green, <laughs> number one. And then we'll take it for a drive and that's when I'll tell you what it's kind of a bugger on this, but really it might just be me. So hang in there, please.
As I often like to say to my two or three viewers and to the two or three of you, I want to specifically say thank you so very much for looking at my silly little videos on our YouTube channel, Motor Illustrated. Check out the reviews on the website too. We do a lot of news and stuff like that as well. Um, but yeah, getting back to what I like to tell my few viewers is when I'm doing a new car review, I say, go outside check around your neighborhood or grocery store parking lot or whatnot and look what's around you and try not be like everyone else. But for this review, I'm going to say, do that. Go outside, check. It's actually kind of nice here. I can't believe it's early March. It's not good, my friend. Not good. Um, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is you look around and you'll see in that parking lot, in your immediate neighborhood, if you can manage to see the forest through the trees, you'll see small compact SUVs everywhere. I mean, everywhere, just absolutely everywhere. And look, it is the biggest segment in Canada, North America too, I'm pretty sure. I should have checked the US numbers, but uh, you know, wherever they go, we go in that respect. And uh, I get the question. In fact, it is one of the most common questions that I get. What? small SUV should I purchase? And my answer is always almost the same. This. This is a 2024 Toyota RAV4 Trail. Now, I always say this because um, I still have medium long-term trust issues with the Korean products. Uh, the Americans, despite their efforts, um, I, I don't know, there, there might be some value built into that, but it always really comes back down to the Japanese vehicles in the segment that I prefer and, well, trust more for longer relationships. I'm going to be straight up honest, I'm not a big fan of the Nissan Rogue. I may have been in the past, but current generation and the one before that, despite how popular it is, it, it's, it's, it's just too vanilla and um, but for, as far as the others are concerned with the exclusion of the CRV of course which I've uh, put down on a number of occasions most recently the hybrid version uh, but it, it, it comes down to the Forester the CX-5 slash CX-50 and the Toyota RAV4 I think I got them all yeah Mazda yeah no Mitsubishi too forget about it at least in my opinion but I don't know anything literally I don't um, but come back full circle, this is the vehicle that I recommend most often. For the simple fact that, historically speaking, and value-wise, Toyota is pretty much hitting it out of the ballpark, especially when it comes to their hybrid and plug-in hybrid vehicles. But this isn't one of them. This is just a good old gasoline-powered 2024 RAV4 Trail. And that's the main reason why I was curious to drive it because not much has changed over the past few years other than, you know, tweaks and this and that. But it was the Trail Edition because as we know, and as I've said, and as you've read, I'm sure that anything adventure, off-road, whatever, or with a, you know, tall roof rack is very hot at this, at this point. And I usually like to pride myself by saying, I don't follow trends and blah, 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 and because I have wagons and stuff like that. But this, you know, more cladding. I'm a sucker for the roof rails. I, I just wanted to spend a week with it, and I have. And for the most part, I can tell you that the value thing that I just mentioned is absolutely true, even with this near top trim RAV4. Uh, and there's only one small issue that I can find with it, and it might just be because of the way I drive. If by chance you are just this curious about what that might be, please, please hang in there as I will do a few laps of this 24 RAV4 trail in army green, number one. And then we'll take it for a drive and that's when I'll tell you what is kind of a bugger on this, but really, might just be me. So hang in there, please. Uh, I guess it's warm now. 
I'm just going to tell you right away. The, the naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder engine that you get in the base RAV4 petrol is, um, that's a tripod, just really, really noisy. When you start it up, when it's cold and it's really warm outside, that's why I took the hat off. It's, it's, it's just terrifyingly warm for early March. Um, yeah, it puts out uh, 203 horsepower at 6,600 RPM and 184 pound-feet of torque. And um, you may have guessed, you know, th to get the max energy out of this 2.5, you really got to squeeze the throttle. And it just really, really gets buzzy in here. That's 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. It's just really, really, like, a lot noisier than, say, a small displacement one turbocharged four-cylinder engine that you get in other models uh, and maybe even noisier than a lot of other naturally aspirated four-cylinder engines in uh, the segment okay so yeah fuel consumption numbers are not good I'm averaging over 11 despite uh, Toyota saying that you can average about 8.4 liters per hundred kilometers there might be a correlation there between you know me discovering how noisy this is and the fact that consumption is high i will admit too that at least two-thirds if not three-quarters of my driving has been done in the city but even so it, it shouldn't be that high i'm not being that crazy um but that that's essentially it everything else about the drive is just absolutely fine i mean when you step up to the trail you get dynamic torque vectoring all-wheel drive with rear Drive line disconnect. In other words, it's just a fancier all-wheel drive system that, you know, with the extra 0.2 inches of ground clearance, you can go a little bit further, and then you have your mud and sand and rock crawl drive modes. Though, I'm I'm willing to bet, you know, that what less than three percent, two percent, one percent of Rav4 trail buyers are actually going to go and mud sand or rock crawl with their Rav4. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I mean, the eight-speed automatic transmission uh, in normal mode is what I've been doing most of my driving. Just eco, I, I couldn't manage, even though I kind of tried. I don't know, maybe things happened last week, and I just needed to, you know, express myself mechanically more. Uh, but uh, in eco, and even in normal, I mean, the eight-speed is fine, but it is kind of it occasionally hesitates or it's slow to shift or, or shifts a lot later than I thought it would. And it's not because my foot is against the firewall, not even remotely close, just now. And I'm, I'm kind of trying to look for problems where there really aren't any, uh, but the ride quality, even with the 19s, is really, really good. I cannot complain as far as that's concerned. With the 17-inch Steelys, it must be even more comfortable, or even with the 18-inch wheels available in the XLE. It must be lovely because it's actually quite nice now. Uh, brakes, brake pedal is responsive. The travel is limited. Uh, steering is connected to the front wheels and the, the way the assistance is set up is just spot on. It just feels, it's completely artificial, but it, you know, if you step away from being a driving enthusiast and you just want a RAV4 to carry the family around and go to Costco, it's, it's actually really nice. Uh, Okay, so in relation also with the engine noise, it does kind of get noisy in here at highway speeds, and I'm only talking about like 110 kilometers an hour here. I'm not saying 150. And I, I think that's it. I mean, in this segment, I do like the Forester, though I don't bring it up that often, mostly because of CVT-related brain issues, whatever. Um, the CX-5 and the CX-50 are really nice, just maybe not the Meridian, don't spend the extra money for that look. See, compared to the Trail, the Meridian is even weaker sauce, if that makes any sense. But yeah, I don't know, Tucson Sportage, they look great, there's tons of stuff built in, but you know, on a four year lease, go for it. Uh, Escape, funny, right up ahead, not a big fan. I mean, other than the hybrid version, I don't see it. CRV, I'm buggered with it. So that narrows it down again to the Mazda and uh, oh, yeah, the Tiguan. Probably my least favorite Volkswagen, um, but it's also extremely popular for what it is. Um, yeah, and RAV4, like I said, this is, this is my usual typical answer to the question, which small, compact, 
crossover SUV should I purchase? And pick your poison, pl uh, plug-in hybrid, hybrid, or petrol. That's it.